We're about to start a new program. It's called Thank You for Serving. What we'd like to do with the cooperation of our good friends at QAC TV7 and the Queen Anne's County Arts Council, which is about to start a, a veteran story project and a veteran's oral history project, is introduce you to some of the veterans, male and female, who served our country in the military service. We'll bring on a guest as often as we can and we'll let them tell about their experiences, what it was like in the military, and it's gonna be about them. They're all Queen Anne's County people. They're all your neighbors. You see them at Acme, you see them at church, and you see them around. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. And again, we're calling the show, Thank You for Serving. There are about 5,000, almost 5,500 veterans in Queen Anne's County. And now we're, not, we're gonna get, Bob, we're not gonna get all 5,500 <laughs> on. We're gonna get as many as we can. And if you know a veteran out, out there, have us contact us. Okay, I'll be quiet. Bob, you're the guinea pig. Okay. Poor Bob, every time his phone rings with my name on I know he hangs up. <laughs> Bob, how about introduce yourself to the audience here? Um, Bob Nilsson, uh, been a resident of the county over here for 20-something years. Uh, been uh, living in Centerville for the last seven and spent a career in construction. Uh, did eight years in the Marine Corps. Well, let's start with that. Okay. Uh, that's good. That's, and this is all about thanking you for your service. Okay. Thank you. How about, when did you go in? Out of high school, college? First or? day of college, I saw a Marine in dress blues. It looked great. I went over and started talking to him, and I signed the paper to join the PLC program. Now, what's the PLC program? Platoon Leaders Class. Okay. Spent summers at Quantico. They were excruciating. <laughs> That's like basic training, right? <laughs> kind of yes. basic. Officer candidates. Yes, school. exactly. Okay. And then... Uh, when I graduated, I got commissioned a second lieutenant. Okay, with the best uniform in the United States military. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, that's the reason I joined. Good for you, good for you. And I went back and uh, spent nine months in uh, Quantico for basically, it's called basic school, is for, to teach you how to be a, a lieutenant. Okay, so you're commissioned, they're gonna, now they're gonna teach you how to do Commissioned, and then I went to uh, engineer school down at Camp Lejeune, North okay. Carolina. I did a, um, Couple of med cruises. I did a Caribbean cruise. Now, when you're, I don't, I was Army, you tell the Marines win all the wars and carry on for all of us. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Marines, and now is that a platoon? Platoon officer? commander. So you had a platoon? I had a platoon commander when I got to Vietnam. I was a senior first lieutenant, made captain in Vietnam, and became a company commander. Okay. Now, where'd you go to school? Where was this? Where was I, went, I grad, went to school on Long Island. Okay. You can probably tell by my accent. I went to Rensselaer Polytech in Troy, New York. Uh, studied civil engineering. Okay. Played for the worst football team in the history of college football <laughs> okay. for what four position, years. What position did you play? I played guard and linebacker. Oh, you were tough. You were a tough guard. We lost every game. I didn't find <laughs> out till 1967 when I was in Vietnam that they finally won a game. <laughs> okay. So now let me keep going back. What year was the commission? When did you graduate? That, Commission is uh, 63. Okay, so we're talking early 60s. Early 60s. Uh, Vietnam. Vietnam Peacetime. Okay. Vietnam oh, didn't really get rolling until 1965. Okay. When they landed a, a group of Marines up in Da Nang. And uh, I would, happened to be on a med cruise at the time. And I didn't know where Da Nang was. And I didn't know where Vietnam Nobody was. Nobody did. Nobody knew where it was. And we came back from the med cruise. We spent seven months we thought our whole battalion might be sent right over to vietnam came back and i was actually due to get out of the service oh get this choice and uh, my three years was up but i said god i can't miss this opportunity i've been training to be a marine sure. now for You're a soldier four years i said uh, this is fantastic so i talked to the marine corps and i said i'll extend a year if you send me to vietnam good for you well, they reeled that fish in oh, they real like, quick. Oh, they were and, happy. Uh, they had me. And <laughs> Somebody next, was happy. Next thing you know, I was going to Camp Pendleton. Let, let me interrupt. Before we go to Vietnam, let's go back to the platoon leadership course. Sure. Explain it. So you're at RPI, and you would spend, what were your summers, summers like? Tell me what your summers were I was like. actually in the reserves as okay. a last corporal and then a corporal. Oh, you're actually getting paid as a... As yes. A, oh, okay. Excellent. And uh, the beauty of it was I got 
longevity time for being in the Marine Corps. So the you whole came four out years as second college, lieutenant with four years or something. With four years, as opposed to the academies, which didn't give you time right, right. credit for time of service. And I went away summers, but I didn't have to do anything during the school year. Oh, so no drills? Like, no not drills, like ROTC or anything? Not like ROTC. So it really worked out good. Now explain for perhaps people who weren't in the military, or us Army guys, what were those summers like? I mean, they... Tough. They got okay. to Quantico, and they uh, essentially tried to break you down physically. Okay. And then when they got you really worn out physically, then they work on you mm -hmm. mentally. And it's... Uh, very, very similar to what goes on at Paris Island in San Diego okay. uh, for the enlisted. And meanwhile, they're doing a lot of weeding and sorting out and... Um, they're trying to get rid of some people. Trying to get rid of people that can't hack it. Right. And uh, when I got back the first summer, I'd done pretty good within the platoon. And that's after your freshman year, first after summer. After my freshman right. year. Right. And when I got back the second summer after my junior year, I'd done very, very good. Great. I was highly ranked in the uh, summer PLC class. And uh, I was pretty cocky, pretty self-confident. And you like, it sounds like you were enjoying it. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, okay, good. Marine yeah. Corps in peacetime is fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and nobody's shooting. <laughs> it's great. So you did, the, you did that freshman year. Now what happens your sophomore year? Same type of Sophomore, you don't do anything. Oh. I went my junior year and uh, did well in both programs. And then when you graduate, you get commissioned. So you're actually the day of graduation? Does it take day place graduation, at graduation? Or? At, at graduation. Oh, put terrific. On your, now, how put on your dress whites and hope you fit in them, you know, oh, right. and all that. And so. all of a sudden, you're a second lieutenant. Right. Second That's lieutenant. That's quite an honor. I mean, yeah. The rest of the campus is looking for a job. You've got a job. Yeah, yeah, I've got a job. Now, how about the boat cruises? You said you were before Vietnam. On the med cruises, med cruises. Well, essentially, we would be attached to an infantry battalion. Okay. So it would be a reinforced infantry battalion, and they'd have tanks, and they'd have engineers, the the and the they'd ship. have motor transport, and all these things attached to them. <coughs> and we go off on a cruise in four or five ships, usually an LSD, which is a landing, landing ship car. dock, an APA, a personnel carrier. And we go float around the Mediterranean. We do training with the um, Italian military. Other we countries' do training forces. with the French Foreign okay. Legion. We do oh, what amphibious are they? I landings. I mean, that's a mythical group, French Foreign Legion. I mean, they Fantastic. still work. Oh, are they really? We we trained with them in Corsica, and they were really great. And I remember sitting there drinking with them one night, way too much, <laughs> and Vietnam was just starting. And I remember so vividly them advising us, stay the hell out of Vietnam. They'd just gotten beaten there, right? <laughs> they knew. And of course, being a young Marine, we thought we knew everything. Okay. We'll, we'll have no problem. Are they characters like they're... Yes. Uh, oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. And they are for many foreigners in... The they're a big percentage of foreigners. Okay. And they sign up for five years. Or non French, I should say, yeah. And uh, they're, they're really a unique group. Now, let me ask you before, again, I'm going to go to Vietnam quickly, but a platoon second lieutenant, on ships. So you're in charge of about how many men? 43. Now, is that like an infantry squad? You've got... It, it's uh, three squads. Okay. Uh, three squads and a couple of staff NCOs. And essentially my guys were primarily trained to be combat engineers. Okay. So they were very, now explain very... Explain to the public, what's a, in case someone didn't know what a... I mean, combat well, engineers. Well, combat engineers set up the beaches for amphibious landings. We set up the landing zones for helicopter landings. We did mine sweeping. We cleared the mines. Okay. We, of course, could do uh, a little bit of fighting if we had to. And we did medical evacuations, ammo resupply. So when I got to Vietnam, I had a company. Okay. We were attached to 5th Marines operating between no, where we, yeah, go ahead. Da Nang and uh, Tam Ki. Just, uh, be, excuse me, between Chulai and Tam Ki. We were just south of Da Nang, about 100 miles south of Da Nang, and we were attached to the 5th Marines. So my guys would be attached to a Marine battalion to the individual companies, and we'd be with them out in the rice paddies and oh, the you're right, out, you're right, you're in the field. Yeah. You're in the field. And we would essentially be taking the wounded, getting them ready to be loaded on a helicopter to be extracted, taking the kill, getting them on helicopters, and at the same time, bringing ammunition in to continue okay. the fighting. So when I got 
to Vietnam in 66. It was June of 66. Uh, the colonel told me I was going to take over a company, B Company First Shore Party, and he said, I suggest you go out and see what Charlie Company's doing. They happen to be up in Tam Key. And me and the first sergeant and a sergeant loaded up a PC and off we went to find out what What's we were going, going to be doing. <laughs> and, OJT, uh, on the job. Keep training. in mind now, all my training had been peacetime. Right, and, right. And I'd grown up on uh, Victory at Sea and John Wayne movies. Oh, heroic characters. So everything is great. Well, I got to Tam Key, which was like the support base. We had artillery, we had mortars and everything, and our helicopters would go out with resupplies from there. But you get in a helicopter and you land in a rice paddy and they load five wounded on a couple of dead. A different world. And you look at the faces of the Marines doing that, it's a different world. Oh. And you and had to have been there to know that. They right? look yeah. like the cover of Life magazine from 1944, where the eyes are about the size of mm. silver dollars. Mm. And uh, I went from landing zone to landing zone. Uh, they'd also throw on a couple of dead Viet Cong. Occasionally there were uh, some that were not quite dead, and that was a challenge in itself. POWs. Yeah, POWs. And uh, you get to see what the infantry is doing. Now, I had guys attached to these infantry platoons, so this first week or 10 days, I stayed with them. And once you go out and you stay with them in the combat, right. these guys will do anything you tell them to do. They're your friends. They're your if you try friends. giving them orders from 100 miles away or 50 miles no, away no. or one mile away, they're not going to really yeah. listen they to you. They respect you because you're there. And what I saw left me dumbfounded. One of the first questions that went through my mind, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Get me back <laughs> to New is, York. This is for real. Right. And then I would rotate from where each of my little units were with the infantry companies and go from battle zone to battle zone. We so were, you were really in the you were Oh, yeah, combat. we were getting you're, shot you're, up. Yes, and we yes. were getting, the helicopter was getting full of bullet holes. And the thing that dawned on me was the utter respect for the infantry grunts. Uh, that's the Marine combat the guys on the, the ground. people in the field with the guns. Because yeah. at least my unit, when the battle was over, we came back to a rear area. Right. Uh, the poor damn infantry grunts they never came there. back. Stayed they there. were there all the time. Mm. And um, we would get in some real hairy battles. That you did. And you're trying to load people on a plane that are borderline whether they're going to live or not. And you're making decisions about who... And this is not Hollywood. This is no. real <laughs> combat. No, this yeah. is with all the blood and guts and gore. And you're trying to figure out who do I Save, evacuate? Yes, what do yeah. I do? You know, He's a life and death decision. And decisions that you never, ever anticipated you'd be making. And uh, I did this for about seven or eight months. I uh, broke a leg and it had to be... Oh, you broke your, your leg? I broke a leg back in the base camp. Okay. I uh, slipped in some mud and broke uh, my <laughs> knee, and I ended up getting sent to Clark Air Force Base, and then they sent me to Guam for rehab. But the seven months I was in Vietnam, it really opened my eyes. I remember we were out in one village with the infantry, and we would sit up for the night, and... I'm looking at these villages. There were women and kids, and maybe one old man. There was no young men. And we looked like we came from outer space. <laughs> well, you're tall. We had bazookas, yeah. we yeah. had rifles, we had radios, we had helmets, we had flak jackets. And these people, the only thing they had was a bowl of rice. That's it. And, and, and the only thing they worried about was a bowl of rice. Mm. And if you'd ask them to define communism versus democracy, no idea. No it would idea. have gone right no over idea. their head. And this the, showed you a whole the crazy part of this yeah. was we'd been in this village three, four times in the last couple of months. Well, how many times you go in the village, stay there for a few hours, 
go on to the next village, and you know, 20 minutes after we're gone, the Vietcong are back, right back in charge. Here. Now, Bob, look, I, I know <laughs> you can go, look, we're going to have you back. We're about, uh, my man, my uh, inside people are going to go crazy here. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for your service. Thank in you Vietnam very much. And on the boats, we're going to get you to come back. And I know we're going to get you to come back to talk about you're involved in a lot of veterans programs, yep. things you've done in the past and currently, which we want to talk about. Right? And what I did on Walter Reed for 20 years. And we're going to get you back and talk about that. Now, let me just tell everybody out in the audience, please, if you know a veteran who'd like to come on and talk, like Bob, all veterans have stories. You don't have to teach a veteran how a story. Uh, please contact us, all right? I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching our new show. Thank you for serving. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. And thank you for serving.